the problem you have from a future conflict point of view is back in the Cold War we had that wonderful spectrum of conflict where you had from low intensity to thermonuclear war and then on the other axis was uh, degree, uh, probability. Very high probability you'll do peacekeeping and peacetime training, but very low consequences. The low end consequences to high end. And then they went down and down and down until all the way out here, very, very low probability, massive destruction of the thermonuclear. Well, so what did we do? We invested down here. We invested to prevent the big war. All these were going on all the time, but we could safely invest here. This is what you had to prevent. Well, now we bring in Frank Hoffman's concept of, of uh, hybrid war, which is more lethal and more frequent and that bumps it, puts a bump in it. Well, as we begin to move into the nano and bio revolution, we're going to see the ability for huge spikes. Where a very limited number of people, maybe even one, can create massive destruction power. And I think uh, the anthrax attack on Capitol Hill is probably a demonstration of that. Well-educated guy, if we got the right guy, we don't know for sure. But if we got the right guy, well-educated, access to primarily, apparently commercially available material, uh, and yet he took on the U.S. government. If that had been an infectious virus and did not come with a warning, it would have been a much more devastating attack. So we are seeing the movement in bio to synthetic biology, which gives you the capability of creating viruses. You can create smallpox in a lab now. Uh, we are now doing artificial organisms of a million base pairs. There's only 200 million base pairs in smallpox and they all got the same four base pairs. So, also available on the internet, you can order, and the genome for, vi for smallpox is on the internet. So literally a couple, uh, potentially one guy in a small lab could create smallpox. And then dissemination, bio has always been, the real problem has been dissemination. It's very, very tricky to dry out a bio agent, either put it in a powder form or whatever kind of form you're gonna disseminate it in, it's hard to do. So use people. If you take the suicide bomber jihadist type mentality and apply that to bio-warfare, I don't try to create it in an aerosol. I simply infect you and 20 friends. Then I put you on airplanes. And airplanes are out the back of your throat. And that makes you more susceptible to viral infection. So I can start a worldwide epidemic in fairly short order. And while some people say, oh, designer bugs, I just stay with what works. You know smallpox works in the wild. You know there aren't things out there that kill it. You make a new bug, you may discover it's subject to the common cold or something. Once you put it out in the wild, it all dies when it runs into something else. Why not use smallpox?